Cinema presents Supermodels du Monde, the ultimate supermodel series. We're counting down a hundred extraordinary catwalkers from every corner of the planet, from the land down under to the Far East. We're ranking each region's most stunning strutters. Get to know Kate. I love fashion. I, I think I loved, I loved it before I started modeling. Jaquera. It's just non-stop. You're running around all day, every day for literally like a month and 10 days and it just doesn't stop. Karen. It's funny. I think this job's hilarious. <laughs> Lily. I was scouted in Camden. That was in high school. Walking down the street with my friend. Stella. A friend of a friend was working at British Vogue and they were looking for people for, for a shoot with Stephen myself. Lily Cole. Uh, compared to being a doll a lot and free raffleite. And Naomi. Some people call people bitches when they're hardworking, opinionated, and they're taking care of their own. Watch and find out which of these seven Brit beauties is number one on our list. And you too can choose your favorite. And to kick off the countdown at number seven, it's Jaquetta Wheeler. Jaquetta Wheeler was just 16 when she was discovered in London, and her career has yet to let up. Famed photographer Mario Testino was the first to spot Jaquetta. I was in a taxi in Knight's Reach and I happened to see her and I was quite impressed by her height, her length, and I guess the idea of her short hair. That's how it all started and I decided to propose her for the Gucci and, and I used her also uh, for French Vogue. Doing the campaign was a lot of fun. The response that I've got from it has been amazing. Once I left school, I've been able to do it full time. Since starring in her first Gucci campaign and many others, Jaquetta remains in demand on the fashion circuit. The good thing is that you meet so many different people from all over the world, which I find really interesting, and there's so many different personalities and characters that you can get to know. The bad side is that Although you're getting to know all these people, which is really cool, you're away from your real friends and your family the whole time, and it can get really lonely. So returning to do the shows in London is always special, even though there isn't much time to unwind. I'm doing Elspeth Gibson, Julian McDonald, Matthew Williamson, Paul Smith, Burberry. It's just like every season sort of half like look forward to but half dread at the same time so it's just non-stop it's like you're running around all day every day for literally like a month and ten days and it just doesn't stop it's like one day after the other it's like i don't know it's crazy <laughs> it was quite hard work but you know it was satisfying i moved to new york but i'm just sort of really going for it now ranking at number six androgynous brit Stella. I was at art college before, finished art college, I was taking a bit of a summer break, you know, after my degree show and everything, and a friend of a friend was working at British Vogue, and they were looking for people for, for a shoot with Stephen Mizell, who was coming over, he didn't want to work with, with people who were like, not, I mean, models, he wanted to work with normal people, so. I'm not really a normal person anymore, but I was then. So I did the shoot and then I did um, Versace advertising with him after that and I just thought well you know I don't know what is you know what is the possibility of it I don't know what could happen but I might take it and see where it goes and I did and this is kind of where I ended up I don't think of myself as kind of a classic beauty like well I don't know like Karen Mulder or something. I mean, I'm not, it's not what I look like at all. It's kind of the opposite end. <laughs> well, I go through phases, you know, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you want to look completely weird, and then sometimes you just want to look very normal. Today I want to be comfortable. It's pretty weird, you get used to it very quickly though. And also you don't think that everybody sees those magazines, you know? You think that you're going to, you know, super snaps to pick up your photographs. You know what I mean? 
because you were just there in a studio with a bunch of people doing a job and it doesn't sink in that a lot of people see those images every time it's a bit of a surprise and at the beginning it's more difficult to recognize yourself and after a while you become accustomed to how you change my most favorite moment I've no idea <laughs> I mean there's some shows which I really enjoy well in Paris I had a lot of fun at the Galliano show. I mean, I always get really nervous before that show. It's the only show that really makes me sort of get butterflies. But um, I was well disguised and I liked what I was set up as. It's great working with Carl. You know, he's such an intelligent guy. He's got so much energy, the amount of stuff that he does. And he's so knowledgeable about so many things. I mean, I love doing the shows, but when you're doing the shows in Milan and then in Paris, and, and I like to go to London as well, and then New York, so you, it's quite gruelling work. My style is just what I like. You get a bit picky about things. You recognise quality when you see it, especially after doing couture shows, you know, when you see how beautifully clothes can be made. We'll see what happens and this is what's happening for the moment and it's great. At number five, it's the ginger model turned actress, Lily Cole. Uh, compared to being a doll a lot and pre-Raphaelite. A distinctive face on the modeling scene, Lily Cole has become one of London's major model exports. It's exciting, it does kind of gradually get bigger and better and you start to get recognized by name, like little things like that, do you know what I mean? At only 16, Lily was named Model of the Year at the British Fashion Awards. Since then, she's gained worldwide exposure, landing coveted editorial spots and lucrative campaigns. There's several editorial um, campaigns, the Prada campaigns just come out. Um, I did the new Moschino campaign. Moschino the first time, I mean, I did it the season before, so um, I was posting it, and then that was, I was obviously really chuffed to get that. This red-haired beauty has graced the runways of top international designers, but we caught up with Lily in her native London. We're backstage at the Junior McDonald show, just waiting, it's supposed to have started already, so I'm guessing it'll start sometime soon. I think they're just finishing off the last girl's hair and makeup. I really love Templey clothes, but I'm kind of, <laughs> I mean, it's biased because I always love their clothes, they're so pretty. Totally stuff I can imagine myself wearing. Between all this, Lily was still a schoolgirl trying to squeeze in her studies along with catwalking duties. I just took yesterday off and then today I came off to school and I'll do the same tomorrow. It's hard work, I'm not going to say it isn't, but I, it means I get the best of both worlds. I don't get sick of either and I, like, I still like going to school, I like seeing my friends. I don't know what I'm going to do when I'm older, not necessarily, I don't think something academic, something more creative, but I'm just going to keep like pursuing the stuff I enjoy see where it takes me. At number four, get to know English Rose, Lily Donaldson. You see the Burberry sign, it's like England. I love it. With her girl next door looks and cool girl attitude, model Lily Donaldson is a favorite of top designers like Karl Lagerfeld, John Galliano, and Oscar de la Renta. We caught up with the British beauty just before she hit the runway for one of her favorite houses, the iconic Burberry Prosum. It's actually really beautiful, this collection. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's really kind of like subtle kind of twist, like a really beautiful jacket, and then in the back there's this kind of like incredible knots in the fabric. It's just really beautiful, really lovely. I was scouted in Camden. That was in high school. Walking down the street with my friend. Yeah, handed me a card. I just thought they were joking. I didn't. I honestly don't know what to think. And then I think I lost the card. 
And then I started thinking about it, and my friend was actually encouraging me. They were like, you know, why not give it a go? And I did, and you know, I found out I liked it. Lily appreciates the unique opportunities brought on by her flourishing modeling career. I like, you know, the fact that I get to travel and I get to, to be around extraordinary people every day. I think it's an incredible experience and life experience and, you know, being able to, you know, wear Christopher's clothes and just be, feel a part of something, you know, I think it's great. You meet so many different creative people and I, I just, at the moment, I'm totally happy and I love this. But there's one thing that Jet Set Model doesn't love about her demanding job. Early mornings, probably. <laughs> That's probably it, really. You know, early mornings, busy, busy. After traveling the world, Lily has set up house in the Big Apple, a fashion capital, and a social hub for the young model. I love it in New York. You know, I'm, I'm very English and I will be moving back to England at some point, but for now, New York is, you know, it's wicked. It's, I have great friends there and, you know, a nice life there at the moment. With campaigns for Anna Sui, Burberry and The Gap in her back pocket, Lily has a relaxed attitude toward her bright future. I'm going to see where the wind takes me. Coming in at number three, the musically gifted Karen. Fall 2009 saw the return of catwalk veteran and designer muse Karen Elson. For her comeback, Karen's stint in Paris was a quick one. I do shoots all the time, I just don't do runway. I just, you know, I mean it's different to do fashion week because I have to leave my kids for so long that I'm not interested, you know, that I arrived yesterday, I'm going to do YSL and Chanel and then leave. Done, just do the minimum but see the people I love. I love Stefano, I love Carl, and I really like Ricardo too, so come in, see my friends, leave. <laughs> this ginger spice darling has proven to be a face to remember. With a career spanning more than a decade, Karen never thought modeling could take her so far. I thought I was fine, I was just a really, really quiet kind of shy kid and I wasn't really popular, I wasn't like kind of one of the girls who everybody wanted to hang out with so I guess it would be called a geek really but I hate that word so <laughs> but yeah it wasn't really, I was kind of like a skinny gawky kid literally that was it. It was a real accidental sort of thing walking down the street one day in Manchester and somebody saw me and said you know do you want to be a model and I just thought they were taking the piss out so joking with me and they weren't. I love where I'm from, but I wanted to kind of travel and leave. I was really sort of desperate just to get out. I don't know why, I just wanted to. I was a teenager and pretty bored. I was going to move down to London eventually, but someone offered this and I'm, you know, 16 years old, nearly 17, and thought, you have one life, you know. Just travel and see what happens, and I was really lucky, you know. As well as showcasing the best international fashion, Karen has fostered relationships with countless designers, most notably Zach Posen. Well, I've known him since he was going to high school, and it's all progressed into this. It's quite unbelievable. <laughs> you know, there's no point hiding your bump and hiding your curves when you're pregnant. So when I put this dress on, it just it felt very, very lovely. In 2005, Elson was married to rocker Jack White of the White Stripes, and they went on to have two children together. From model to mom, Karen says the fashion world has transformed her for the better. I'm a lot more confident and I'll say what I think now, whereas before I wouldn't. And also, I feel like I've learned such a valuable lesson in life so far. I've lived the past two years, like I feel like a life, a whole life, compared to some people. It's funny. I think this job's hilarious. <laughs>
Landing at number two, it's the eternally beautiful Naomi. I just take it day by day and what comes, comes, and what doesn't, I won't miss because I never knew. Naomi Campbell hasn't missed much in her more than 25 years of modeling. The glamorous globalization of Campbell has included runway, magazine, and acting work. Action. Pleased to meet you. I'm girl 75. Hello, this is Mistress Marlene. I heard you've been a naughty boy. Despite her fame, Naomi was still excited over her first American L cover shoot. After 10 years, can you believe? <laughs> it was a very good cover for us. It's still exciting to get a cover for me. She tried everything. She, she's going to continue, I think. Continue she did with her very own doll, a partnership in the fashion cafe with fellow supermodels, and her very own perfume with an essence of her personality. I would describe it as very mysterious. When they did a survey of what people, percentages of me, it was independent, mysterious, outgoing, outspoken, sexy, opinionated. And I think it all boils down to, I think, just being honest with yourself at the end of the day. Some people call people bitches when they're hardworking, opinionated, and they're taking care of their own and in control of their own career. I don't care to change that because that's the way I'm going to stay because it's also protected me in a lot of many great ways. How did the modeling days begin for this South London-born aspiring dancer? So I was hanging out after school in London and um, an agent came up to me and gave me a card and you know, said, you know, if you want to be a model you can come to my agency. You know, I thought about it, took the card to my mother and um, she was like, no. I put you in a school to be a dancer, dance is what you're going to be. And so um, like my vacation time, she just let me go try and it turned out well. I've always been very lucky in the people that I've had around me and, um, and my mother. Close friends, such as the late Johnny Versace, reveled in Naomi's ability to breathe life into their designs with her panther-like strut. I'm not there to show off myself. I want to show the clothes in the best way possible. Sometimes her runway style had its pitfalls. I had to laugh. I'm going to run off and cry and sulk. Campbell is also blessed with a dynamic face. I really like Naomi's face because you can do so many different faces, which is nice. You know, you can transform her. If I know I have to go out to the premiere, I know I have to stop and smile at the cameras and do all the whole bloody da thing. As my, I've also lived my life in public, I had to make my mistakes in public, but I had to learn from them in public. So that's pretty hard. Sometimes you have to take life as it comes, and for me, right now, that's how I need to take it. Claiming our top spot at number one, the iconic Kate Moss. Kate Moss, the pint-sized Brit who started the waif movement, became one of the most recognizable models of the 1990s. The beauty, who went on to international fame, was discovered appropriately in an airport. I was traveling in America on business. It was a Friday night, summer, hot, JF Kennedy Airport. I turned around and she was on our check-in queue for Pan Am. She was 14 years old then, and she's been with us ever since. Moss has been in the public eye ever since, especially after landing a plum high-profile contract with Calvin Klein. Kate Moss, major, major in the 90s. Suddenly, girls did not have to be tall and skinny. They could be Kate Moss. How would I describe Kate? Beautiful, sweet, amazing, wonderful, like, gorgeous, but not just gorgeous, beautiful, like, in an aesthetic way, but she's a beautiful person inside. Kate Moss is somebody I adore, I work with her all the time, and I just love the person, you know? I think she inspired loads of people. She was a breakthrough, you know? She was a breath of fresh air, and I think, you know, the women we're seeing today are a result of her. She looks so different now. She looks more amazing all the time. 
She's the last one of the big star and she's been the first one of this new generation. So I think it's, she's represented uh, today. Kate's professional success never waned throughout the 90s and into the new century. In 2002, she gave birth to a daughter, Lila Grace, but never completely gave up runway. Her unique sense of style garnered Kate an award in 2005 for fashion influence from the Council of Fashion Designers of America. It gives me great pleasure to present the CFDA's award for fashion influence to my friend Kate Moss. Wearing the designs of her friend John Galliano, a soft-spoken Moss accepted the award. I'd like to thank um, the CFDA for giving me this award and um, all the people that have had the opportunity to work with over the years. Thank you very much. This was followed by her induction into the Best Dressed Hall of Fame, but it was what happened in between that kept Kate in the headlines. Long known as a party girl, in 2005, Kate's wild ways made headlines when she was photographed allegedly using drugs. Nicknamed Cocaine Kate, the fashion industry quickly distanced themselves from her. However, less than six months later, she changed that to Comeback Kate and starred in a slew of campaigns in 2006, earning an estimated $9 million. Oh, oh she's dressed. Kate's eclectic style caught the attention of Sir Philip Green, owner of British high street phenomenon Topshop. And in 2007, he approached the young mom about designing a line for his chain. It's very um, Hamptons, I was thinking. I love fashion. I, I think I loved, I loved it before I started modeling, and I always used to go into my mum's wardrobes and, you know, clear out all the flares and cut them up and make them into skirts. And, and I've always just really liked it and dressing up and I still and I you know I dress up my friends and we all dress up and that's fun I just think it's fun. Look is that should look that's why I'm a model. Look that's how it's supposed to look. In 2009 the one-time wave co-chaired the Metropolitan Museum's Model is Muse exhibit and was ultimately the personification of the theme. Kate Moss was the anti-model. I always think of her as kind of the raging face of a quiet generation. They were sort of Generation X. There was a sort of reticence about her. She had an edgy, kind of street smart cool to her and seemed a bit wary of fashion early on. She's always maintained distance, so always seemed a bit above the fray. Kate Moss, for me, is the great shift. She introduced to fashion a kind of anti-fashion beauty. The fact that she is as studied on going to a fashion shoot as she is in images from the fashion shoot contributes to her power.